Dirty monkey. Okay. Filthy ape. <laughs> Disgusting <laughs> orangutan. orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> Slammy baboon. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all good names for a new band. Yeah, exactly. We just got to make synonyms That's of the that name word. That's a new band. <laughs> <laughs> Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We're back. I am Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads. This is. Long day today. Oh, yeah. But I am excited to do this podcast. That's good. We've got uh, the energy level up. No, energy level late. is up. Yeah. We're good. We've got uh, yeah, jumping jack. awesome segments today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we get into the agenda, or I should say I go over the segments, which I often do when we have segments. Yep. Um, an interesting topic came up, and I wanted to just get some thoughts on it. It's not really a debate. It's just uh, I don't want to jump right into the dad's debate, which we often do. <laughs> yeah. Because I like to do that. But it was it came up. The topic came up in the meetup from a couple of the dads. And it was interesting because it, it came up. Multiple people have had felt the same way. They work out of their house. Okay. And I don't know if you've, you've worked out of your house I have. briefly. I did or, for yeah. a few months, actually. For about seven to eight months, I was working remotely. And that's it wasn't technically out of my house. Sometimes I'd go to a coffee shop or I'd go to someone okay. else's office. But, but you're also, but, no, don't have kids at home. <laughs> correct. Right. Yeah. So these guys work out of their house and they start, they were talking about how they started feeling a little crazy. Mm. And I mean, like even the words like socially inept you know, came out like because they don't get out. They're yeah. like, oh, how do I talk to somebody? You know, like really forgetting like how to be social. Yeah. And and depression, a little bit of depression kicking in. And like, it was really yeah. interesting because one of the guys brought it up. And then I was literally like three or three or four of other guys were like, oh, man, I, I got that same situation. Right. And I was like, whoa, wait, well, let's this is a good topic. Like what's going on here? You know? Yeah. yeah. And I remembered because, you know, I worked at home or have worked at home in stints for many different years and many different times. I mean, yeah. I've, I've been a consultant, you know, it was off and on. And so I worked at home cause I was one, I just saved money on a, uh, you know, on an office. Yeah. And then two, you know, Hey, I could be home when the baby's there a little bit more, whatever, and have a flexible schedule looking back now. And I remember towards the end of each one of those stints, it wasn't very good for me. Like I do recall feeling that way. Sure. And sort of feeling lost you yeah. know, and like, whoa, 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 like I, not interacting with people really affected me. And I remember this actually even before I had children, before I was married, mm. I worked out of my house and just I had moved to a new house. I had an extra, you know, it was now I went from like a condo to this house where I had multiple bedrooms. I'm like, oh, I might as well make one an office. Mm-hmm. And I just was home all the time yeah. doing this, you know, and I found that it's like you do, you kind of lose touch with reality. Yeah. And I remember going out to like shop or something like that with a friend and like looking at everyone going, wow, all these people are happy. Yeah. Like they're, and they're talking. Right. What, what is this? You know, (laughs) uh, society. Well, and so what I was realizing, right. When, like when these guys were talking about this is how similar this is probably to how women feel when they stay at home, you know, and I'm, this could be man or woman, but I'm talking about traditional roles. Sure, sure. Not, I have to preface that every time. But, <laughs> you know, where a mom may stay at home with a baby. Yeah. And is just kind of, you know, stays in the house. Yeah. You know, and just is sitting there with the baby all day and mm-hmm. trying to, you know, it's really, really difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't think we realize that your people realize that role In any situation, whether you're the male, female, whatever, but when you're sitting in the house, that's where you live. That's where you work. That's, you know, consider the mom's job of or the even if it's a stay at home dad, you know, taking care of the child is their job. And then you sleep and then you do. I mean, it's like everything gets just sort of all meshed into one. Yeah. You've got to get out. Right. And so this, you know, one of the guys that we were talking to and the sort of the group was helping it along was, you know, make make lunch dates. 
yeah. you know, with either friends or coworkers or, you know, cause he actually does work for a company, but is able to work out of his house. He's working remotely. But there's, he said, he's like, there's a couple other people even on a street that work out of their house. I was like, yeah, dude, go, you know, go for lunch. Yeah. yeah. You know, get out of the house, do something. And, and he was like agreeing that like he needs to do that more. When I was working remotely, I would make a point to touch base with people that maybe had flexible schedules or, mm-hmm. and, and lived in the area that just once in a while, just go to lunch yeah. or maybe during happy hour, just go grab a happy hour right after right after work, right. Go out and just hang out socially. And sometimes I would make a point to go to a coffee shop to work. Thankfully, my job totally can also be done on a laptop. Right. So we're, we're fortunate in that regard. Yeah. I mean, for, for my own experience, I, I really thought I would enjoy working out of the house mm-hmm. with the flexibility. But over time, it just it became difficult. And yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember not liking it. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up actually call it squatting, whatever, uh, <laughs> Squ- finding a, a, a friend who had extra office space close oh, to my okay. house. Yeah. Yeah. Just so I mean, because I didn't want to increase the expenses. Yeah. You know, because it was expensive to get an office sure. at the time, you know. And so I just uh, it was a friend had, had some extra office space and was like, yeah, man, we got plenty, you know, just you can have a room over there. And, and so yeah. it was awesome. And then and then I ended up trading for some work, you know, some space or so for I mean, a good like two years. I, I didn't pay for office space, That's but awesome. I had it. Yeah. You know, and I could go to the office and there was people there. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. And I was able to interact. And even if I didn't use it every day, it was really nice to have that. And like you said, I mean, you can go to a Starbucks, you can go to yeah. know, all different places have free Wi-Fi sure. or whatever. Yeah. I think that is important. And, you know, being out in public is one, but actually being able to interact with people is another. That is. Yeah. I, and I that's even for that. the moms who, you know, they have like a mommy and me group or other mm-hmm. meetup groups or whatever. That social interaction with people is really, really important. And that's, you know, that is the perk to work too, because not only are you interacting, but you're talking about work adult related stuff. stuff, adult <laughs> stuff and work related stuff. And also, um, you Your may mind. be able to learn from things on the fly. You might not ask those questions when you're working from home and, or you're talking to people on an email. When you think of something, you like turn around to something, your buddy or your colleague or your superior or your subordinate and talk to them about some things that are going on and then figure things out. I know people now, no, I'm director at a company and now I have colleagues coming to me and ask me questions and we figure things out together. Sometimes I learn from trying to explain something that they know. There's huge benefit of having that collaboration. I mean, I, I, I understand a lot of people, it works for them and they like to work out of the house or they like to telecommute or whatever. I, for me, it, it it just, it didn't work. That's why I now have a separate office and, you know, people can, I meet people here and I have yeah. an assistant and I have, you know, I interact with more and more people, yeah. but also getting, you know, getting out and having the meetups and doing things. It's, it's really, yeah. really important. Yeah, you know? no, I agree with that. Um, but I think it gives you that a little bit of that sanity. So whether it's the male or the female, I think just in general, you know, you've got to have that time out of the house. So if your wife is somebody who does stay at home, she's got to get out, yeah. you know, have adult time, hang yeah. out with the friends, hang out, you know, whatever you've, you've got to have that adult interaction. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's really, really important. No, um, I agree. So that was just something I, I had thought of cause it was just, it was on my mind when we were talking about the meetup and it was just really, really pertinent um, or not pertinent, but it was really just, amazing how many of these guys felt that same way you know yeah. about working at home and it was difficult i i yeah. i'm on the fence with it because i do like it i did enjoy that time that i had because i had a lot of freedom and flexibility and since i had friends that were kind of in the same boat or my i didn't think i dwindled in the amount of social interaction we well, didn't have a baby crying at I home and that, and not, not saying your situation was no amazing, no but, but i yeah. that's where that's where i could i can honestly say it from that dude's perspective yeah is that that's why it didn't bother me as much but i can definitely see the stir craziness when you have well I, yeah, I remember can, my can. son was born yeah and i was working out of the house and i remember like my wife had to do some stuff and so he was on my lap in like one of those boppy pillow things or something (laughs) as I'm typing he's sleeping (laughs) and I'm trying to type and then like the phone would ring I'm like shh you know, because if you'd wake up and then, you know, and I, I could tell like it wasn't good for my wife either. Right. At home. right. You know, it's like yeah. it just wasn't. I mean, she, you know, was working part time. It just it wasn't a good situation. And yeah. so but that was for us. You sure. know, so I, I had to just sort of uh, pony up and get an office because that yeah. was the yeah. only way to survive. Right. You know? Right. Just mentally. Um, yeah. You know, I, I can't I couldn't even just for my family to shush them all the time, you know, cause I'm going to make a phone call. Right. Right. And, and people don't mind if they have children. It's like a dog, mm-hmm. you know, the, the barking in the background, yeah. like, 
people get it. Like you're at home, but they only really think it's okay if they have the similar situation, right? <laughs> or yeah. they have a dog, or they have a kid, or something like that. That's a know? good point too. Like shushing people at home, like and that's and that's why I kind of took my work outside because anyone who was at my place, I don't want to bother them with my work and saying, I don't want to be, be bothered by you. Yeah, be right. quiet, or I have to take this phone call, or whatever. So I would always go somewhere else, and if I need to be in a silent right. area, I would go somewhere more silent. Yeah, it's not easy. It isn't it's, easy. It's not you're easy. Right. You're right. You've got especially if you out. have social things that you have to do at work. Right. Like you, like you said, take phone calls and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just remember some serious phone calls coming in and just, shh, you know, it, it's, it's Google, shh, you know, or whatever. It was like, I, you know, whoever it was, yeah, it was yeah. like, I, I had to take these big phone calls yeah. and it was just, yeah, you're in the middle of playing a game and also ah, Google. Yeah, totally. So yeah, baby crying in the background. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, but like I said, I wanted to sort of just touch on that and let's let's go into the uh agenda of the segments here mm. we're gonna start out with some light her fire oh, okay yeah start we're right bring, bringing that. that back cool um gonna go into stuff to do and it's an old-fashioned uh call it a game call it a a, a thing to do okay uh, which is stuff to do. It <laughs> right. makes sense, I guess. Yeah. That was you know. things belong to stuff. Uh, we're gonna do supercharge, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a topic that I've had in the past, but a new twist on it. Okay. We got some dad's homework. I'm gonna give some homework out, and then we'll finish up with. Uh, it's it, it's not really the quote of the day. Maybe we can call it the cartoon of the day. Mm-hmm. It's a funny cartoon I came across, uh, and it's related to working at home. Okay, so, so it kind of ties things. Ties okay. it tie, yeah, it ties yeah. it in. I saw that, and it was just it was pretty funny. So mm-hmm. let's uh, let's get started with light her fire. So on this segment of light her fire, uh, Doctor Ellen talks about how we have uh, sometimes some energy for other people and not our significant other. Yeah. And, uh, you know, why is that? And, and, and sort of touches on one of those subjects that often, you know, a spouse will notice mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, may point out to you. So sure. let's, let's hear how that goes. Cool. She'll constantly compare the amount of energy you have with her to the amount of energy you have with other people. One man in my class finally understood why his wife was constantly complaining. He'd come home exhausted from work and become a couch potato. If his wife asked him to do her a favor, he was usually too tired and found some excuse not to help her. But if a neighbor friend stopped by, he'd always have the strength to talk and laugh and have a few beers. He somehow found the energy to go out drinking with his buddies on Friday night, but not to take his wife out on Saturday night. He realized how unfair he had been. His wife deserved more than he had been giving her. He was spending quality time with everyone except the woman he loved. So, of course, this never happens to any of us. Of course not. Of course not. We're perfect in every way. Absolutely. That's why we do the podcast. (laughs) We We teach others. We are preachers. (laughs) Actually, now we're learning as we go. Yeah, exactly. Um, No, but that totally makes sense of, you you know, often we don't have the energy or we make excuses for certain things. When somebody else needs something, we're quick to help. Yeah. You know, quick to jump on it. Sure, sure. I like to think that I'm better at this <laughs> now yeah. than I was. I would say the know? same for myself. Like, I think I'm better. Like, if I like gonna, to make... I'll make time uh, for people, both. Yeah, people so are I'll, priority. Yeah, I'll go beers with so-and-so, but I'll also do beers <laughs> with the girlfriend right. or whatever it is, too. Or, you know, go out for wine and go out for dinner and stuff like that. Because I like that as well. Like, And that's both bringing our social worlds together in some yeah. way. Yeah. I think, you know, I think in general, this is a, it's a very generic, you know, general statement that, sure. you know, the if the man is doing that and he's sort of neglecting the time, you know, oh, yeah, you have time to go out golfing on the weekend, but why are we not going, you know, and the, the, the expense of that. Because golfing's and, fun. Right. Uh, you know, oh, I'm doing business, you know, yeah, and but, right, the right. you know, the ability like let's or let's say the expense of that kind of thing where that could be spent on a family vacation or, you know, family yeah, trip or something. Yeah, sure. You know, and it's justified. So right. I, I do think that that's pertinent. It's it makes sense. Um, you just, you know, you really want to make sure that you are making the energy towards the people that are really special in your life. And I totally agree with that. And I think I think what happens is that people get into the psychology of, well, that person's around me all the time, so I'm around them all the time, so they don't need my time. Right. They got me every day, right. every morning, every night. And then my buddies only have me on Fridays. So let me go out with my buddies on Friday and live it up. Mm-hmm. And then they've got drunk and stupor and they come home. And <laughs> yeah. you know. But I mean, I think that's kind of the, what what's going on there. Mentally. Yeah, I think one of the mistakes 
that people make. And, and in this situation, let, I'll, I'll actually say it could be the woman who's making the mistake is she's keeping score. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the one thing I will I will sort of bring up is um, and this actually came up in a meetup recently, too, um, mm -hmm. that we often keep score in a relationship and keeping score is not good. You know, right. it's very self-centered. You're not going to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you also begin to see everything in really a negative lens. Mm -hmm. You know, you're keeping score and you're sort of saying, you know, I'm always the one doing this. Yeah. You know, or I just did this. So why aren't you doing that? Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and even if you're just thinking it in your head, it's like, well, I cleaned the dishes. You need to be doing this. Right. You know, and that, and that's a that keeping score thing or like I initiated sex. Now you need it. I mean, it's just, it is, it's like, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a, it happens a lot. There's absolutely. Yeah. It, and, it, and it, but it's dangerous. It is dangerous. You know, because we're, we're really thinking about ourselves and what we are contributing mm -hmm. rather than what the other person's contributing or what we can do for them. Yeah. You know, and it's not going to get, it's the same thing we talked about in a different past episode. It's like, you're not going to get that behavior to change that way. Right. You know, no, it's just not. Yeah, I agree. You know, so I think that that's a very, very good point about, you know, keeping the score. It's just not going to yeah. it's not going to work. And, like, and, yeah, I'm all the one. Yeah, I think you had written this in the notes and liner notes, but I am always on the one who does X. You know, what I mean, it's like yeah. and like I almost don't want I mean, I don't want to say it like that, but it's like, yeah, exactly. That's why you keep doing it. Right. <laughs> you know, That's your thing that you do. But well, I mean, but I'm not saying that that's the way you should think. But that's almost like I want to say that if someone throws that at me. You know what I mean? Like, you're all, I'm always the one who does X. Right. Okay. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think one of jerk, the you know? one of the ways you can um, combat that in your head or, or, or just for yourself is when you find yourself thinking, you know, I'm always the one to do this. Add to the statement and say, but my wife or my girlfriend always mm -hmm. does this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you are back, you know, you, you, you catch yourself. Yeah. You catch yourself going, gosh, why am I the, always the one to blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then adding to it saying, oh, but my wife. It's like is the one who yeah, always did does you this. Say, okay, it's our roles. We now are, we're equal people, but we have different defined roles that we're right. doing here in this right. case. And that's what I like about it. That's why I, I try to establish in relationships. It's like, there's a certain amount of equality. If you do this, then I'll do these things. Right. You know? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's certainly not a good feeling if you feel like you're the one who's always doing or initiating or making or planning or, do, you know, whatever. But maybe you can make some of those positive statements we mm -hmm. talked about mm -hmm. in previous episodes mm -hmm. that, you know, hey, hun. I'd love if you were able to blah, 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 you know, make this, 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 right. you know, or do this, 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 you know, and, and putting it in a real, it's the tone, it's how you say it, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Yeah. So that's just something I think, uh, you know, keeping score is not beneficial. You know, we could probably yeah. do a whole episode about keeping Seriously, score. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I know that happens a lot in, in, in a lot of types of relationships. I always do this. Yeah. You always do that. You know, and I, and I had that conversation recently with, with my wife cause I, I realized there was a situation where I did that or mm -hmm. I may do that on occasion, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's not fair mm -hmm. to the other person, you yeah. know, um, and vice versa. I mean, it's just, you just, you just don't want to be keeping score. Yeah. I agree. You know? Although, you know, me, I'm like, no, let's keep score. Cause I want to be, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's not going to work. So. <laughs> Ah, uh, all right. <laughs> Live and learn. I know. Let's move into stuff to do. Dad, what are we going to do today? So stuff to do today, I'm, t I'm suggesting to do a good old fashioned puzzle. Yeah, puzzles. When is the last time you did a puzzle? Oh, it's been ages. And you mean like one of the ones you put pieces, jigsaw Actually puzzle. Actually put pieces together. Yeah. Not an app. Not, not an app, not a crossword puzzle. No, not a... Um, Candy Crush, <laughs> you know, that's a puzzle. No, well, I'm talking about cardboard pieces of yeah, a puzzle. Right. You know, we've talked about board games, that kind of stuff. So the reason I brought this up, too, is I, well, you know, I remember, you know, not of recently. I mean, my kids have had like these little puzzles, like, you know, somebody will give them for a gift, like it's a superhero puzzle for my son or something yeah. like that. You know, and, and these little, little puzzles that the kids like to do. But as they get a little bit older and their brains expand and everything else, you make them a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think puzzles are a very, uh, it's a cerebral thing for, yeah. for many, but it also is very calming. It is a calming thing. Yeah. You know, and I recall, and this is funny, as I was like thinking about this, as a kid, we always had puzzles out. Yeah. Like it was, it was a real big part of 
um, my childhood. Yeah. It's just, just strange. It all is coming back to me. Like, so what we would do, and we're talking, you know, 5,000 pieces. Yeah. You know, really maybe, big ones. Yeah. Little tiny 2,500, pieces. you know, yeah. whatever. Do Which, the borders first. Totally. Totally. <laughs> or, hey, give me all the blue ones. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I want to do the sky. <laughs> and uh, so what we would do is, I mean, over a long period of time, we would do that. It'd be on like a table, the kitchen table, something, you know, where we, you just you sit down, you do it, whether it was at night or, you know, mm. you have free time. And there was times where I remember my parents would be there. I'd be helping them, whatever. It was just an ongoing thing mm. for many years. I was very young. Mm. And after it was completed, we would actually glue it. Oh, yeah. So you can put, you know, you'd put this like. Yeah, they have paste. puzzle glue. Yeah, they actually have something. Yeah, that's a, it's a, a called paste. puzzle glue. Yeah. yeah. So you put the paste on it, and yeah. it was like the shiny or whatever, and it protects it. And then we would hang it <laughs> upstairs. Yeah. And so we had this like huge wall of puzzles. Completed of, uh, puzzles. Yeah. And I, it's funny, I was actually talking to my sister recently. I, I, I <laughs> was. Uh, to find out and I was like what were the puzzles that we had there because the only one I remembered was Star Wars <laughs> of course you know I think there might have been some nature scenes or something like yeah, that yeah but, but you remember Star Wars but there was a huge one. Star Wars one and I just remember that one you know like Han Solo and Chewbacca and all of them and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever you know it's like a 5,000 piece you know thing. yeah <laughs> and so that was it was funny because you'd walk upstairs we had a, a house that it was a decent sized house but it was very high so there's many levels like yeah. you'd always have to walk upstairs to go to the next level and it was the very top level where like our bedrooms were and there was this huge wall yeah. and that's where they all were. And so people would walk and go, wow, like it was, it was a thing to show people, yeah. you know, when they came in, it was just all these puzzles hanging. Then I remembered it was shifted to the garage when like we got our house redesigned, you know, yeah, my parents yeah. like came into some money and, like, you know, my mom started working, being successful. Yeah. And like it moved into the garage. It wasn't <laughs> as cool to have the, you know, these you know, yeah, puzzles Han on the Solo wall. On the yeah. wall. <laughs> Han Solo, I guess. Yeah, but I Chewbacca. remember it was just so. It was something that was. Um, it was fun as a family. You mm-hmm. know, it was fun to do that. And so, you know, I was just bringing that back. That's a. That's, it was a cool thing to maybe do with your kids or you know as a family. And you don't have to do it all at once. You just have to designate. That's an what's area. cool about it. You, but you have, you have to keep it there. But like you can come back to it and then try to yeah. assemble a couple more pieces and come back to it later. And right. Like, yeah, that, I like that idea because that's such a. I mean, you don't have to put them on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you took it to the next, the next step, you know, other level. I don't know. I think it must have been like my mom that was just like, "Hey, yeah, you know, let's, let's lacquer keep it up. Let's lacquer." And I remember <laughs> that process was always so exciting as yeah. a kid. Like, we we finished it. It's, we get to you know yeah. glue it. Yeah. Like it was just. It, I remember those moments. Yeah, like yeah. The, I really thought that was cool because yeah. we had finished it. And you it's know, like the trophy at the end of the, yeah. And wanting to touch the glue. And, you know, <laughs> and stuff. So God, I must've been really, really small. So uh, no, but I, I, I makes you want to go out and buy a puzzle now. Totally. Well, I hope it's, so. It's one of those things that like, you know, I think about it's like, yeah, you know what? I don't do a lot of things that are like construction that are outside the computer. Right. I, do, I even, I make music. I'm a creative guy, but I, it's all, it's all d- computer. digital. It's all yeah. digital. I don't, I rarely ever get on a guitar and just start jamming away because most of my stuff's on a digital medium. Right. So it's like really nice to take outside of that and be able to just do something that's outside of that. That's cool. Not staring at a screen. Well, then do it. Do a puzzle and then let us know how it goes. Yeah. Take a picture. I want to see it on your, uh, on our <laughs> Facebook page. It has to be a thousand pieces or more, otherwise it won't yeah. feel complete. Uh, if you have any puzzle stories yeah. nah, <laughs> or anything, uh, yeah. give us, give us a shout. We, we always welcome comments, feedback. Uh, email us podcast at dudes to dads.com. That's right. Also on uh, Twitter at yeah. dudes to dads. Hit us up. Uh, Facebook dudes to dads com. Mm-hmm. I, think, I don't know how that came about, but that's what our <laughs> that's handle what it is. is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, just let us know how. Th- and then also Stitcher, Stitcher and, and iTunes. iTunes. Yeah. We, we love Do if you guys can listen comments. to there, uh, listen through that, give us some feedback, some comments. That'd be great. Really appreciate it. And uh, so let's move on to Supercharge. So uh, t- I've talked about building forts yes. in the past. So I actually built one the other day. Did you? Yes. It was, cool. It was much better because now my son has a bunk bed. So the fort blanket is much higher. Oh, the, so you or got the to blankets use are higher. Yeah. yeah. You could, so it was a much bigger fort than we had before. Yeah. Um, it was, it was my daughter, actually, that wanted to do it. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of cool. And so we did it in my son's room. Um, but you know, we would take blankets, pillows, et cetera, or whatever. And then we'd like read the books. You know, if we, if yeah. we were reading at night, we would read the books under there. My son actually slept in the fort <laughs> that night. Cool. Yeah. Um, there are, I don't know why I didn't know of this before, maybe because I've never looked at it, but there's fort building kits. Oh, geez. So 
think of like really large tinker toys. Okay. That's what's like. It's like a pipe with a with a you know oh, a yeah, bolt yeah. on it, whatever. So you can make these like figures or the, you know these like it's like I mean it totally looks like Tinker Toys, but yeah. you know multiplied times fifteen twenty yeah, in right. size. Um, and then there was one that actually glowed in the dark. Oh, cool! It was cool. It was called. It's by this company, Crazy Forts. There's mm-hmm. a couple different companies that do it. We'll put, I'll put a link to it on Amazon. Um, on our on our page for this episode, of yeah. course, you know, if you do click on that and purchase, we get uh, two cents, which <laughs> pays for nothing. Helps. Yeah, but, hey, yeah. helps. Um, Every little bit helps. But yeah, it's, it's so it's it's cool. It, it, just the ability to like make these forts. You have the, it's like a kit. It glows in the dark. It's really really cool. Yeah, um, you can do all kinds of shapes. Buy different pieces for it. I was like, wow, that makes fort building like even more fun yeah you know? yeah a little bit more expensive next but, level you know but yeah totally next level yeah. indoors it's safe you know there's yeah. nothing really crazy about the pieces you know they've right. got to obviously be a certain age and you can or, mix and match with your pillows and blankets right well some <laughs> of them i think came there's other ones that like came with like things that you can put over them oh, so like okay. if you're going to build a castle yeah you know that has like castle like a colored turret. stuff that like that's covered yeah versus other ones like just have the 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 poles and the you know, right. connectors and you just use a sheet right you know, right to, yeah. to do whatever yeah. you want so get a moat yeah totally well they and they and they even have examples like so I looked at some of the websites for some of them they have like examples of you, they show you different things to build and all oh, that yeah. stuff so cool. but a fort building kit who would have thought i never yeah genius totally right. genius yeah, yeah. so that's the supercharge i thought you know that's taking fort building in in your house to the next level right even if you're not that handy you know we talked about even forts outside where the guy on my street used to like build, you know, yeah. insane, elaborate wood forts. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, this is just real simple. Put yeah. some piece together. The kids can actually do it. Right. You don't right. Even have to do it. with yeah. the kids. So um, I thought that'd be fun. Cool. So let's move into dad's homework for dad's homework. It's going back to uh, one of the topics we talked about earlier in the podcast, and that's about keeping score. Mm -hmm. I I think it would be really beneficial for anybody to catch yourself keeping score in your relationship. And that could be the relationship with your child. It could also be the relationship with your significant other. Um, The first thing is to acknowledge that you're actually doing it and you know realizing you're keeping score so whatever yeah. that is like in your mind you're thinking gosh why am i always the one to do this you know x whatever um and add but my partner always does y or whatever right you know, substitute sure um and so the, the whole point of it is is like if you do catch yourself thinking gosh why am i always the one that's doing this you're reinforcing with another positive statement of realizing that your partner is also doing this all the time. Sure. Okay. You know, and for some that could be difficult because they may feel like they're the ones that are doing everything all the time. Right. But I would venture to say that that's probably not the case. You know, yeah. I mean, that's our perspective. It's a perspective. Right. Exactly. Our perspective is, you know, we always think that we are the ones that are doing everything. Right. But like, as an example might be, if, you know, the husband is, a, let's say it was a stay at home dad. And he feels like he's the one that takes care of the house, does all the stuff. Well, meanwhile, the woman is the one who's working and bringing in the income. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so you got to think about that. Now, there's probably some unequalness in every relationship. Nothing's mm-hmm. perfect. But it's the idea of tr- stopping or reducing the, t- the amount of times you're keeping score. Right. Because it's not going to be healthy for the relationship. Right, right. You know, if you are keeping score... You know, you've got to check that and mm-hmm. you've got to look at why that's the case. So if you're unhappy in a you know situation, well, you know, reducing the scorekeeping will help you not be that way. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It'll it'll make you a little bit happier. Do you think it would help to like to literally keep a score? No. Like to, like when you're doing it, you go, oh, just, OK, I'll just make this note. Well, because you do that in your head and you just kind of eh, I'm always and it's no. always it's always an absolute statement. I always do this. 
It's never like I did this one time and she did this one time and I did this twice. And this well, no, did. people. I'm sure there is like that. I mean, if you know people like yeah, that, yeah, more no. ridiculous. That, that was that was said. This was a topic that came up in the meetup, and, and and yeah, it, it is like that. I said like when you initiate, like someone initiates sex, like well, I just did it last week, you know, <laughs> or you know, how I come I always times, do? It? Yeah, I mean, I'm always she the one, has one more. Well, but I'm always the one that plans the date night. Yeah. Why can't she plan the date night? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's th- even just that. Mm-hmm is a keeping score type of thing. Right, We right. do that with so many different things. Mm-hmm. And then the idea is to just kind of refrain from doing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not saying, sense. you know, all the time, but catch yourself. I, I guarantee, you know, everybody does something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, either small or big or whatever. Or same thing with the kids. You know, you're, you're feeling like the kids never do X, Y, or Z. You know, catch yourself thinking like, you know, why am I the one that's always picking up their toys? Right. Well, gosh, my son, you know, went to school today and but I don't know, whatever it is, like yeah. you, can, you can think of it in a positive light. And I, I would imagine that that would start to reduce yeah. the amount of stuff that you get frustrated. At, right. You know? Right. Because you don't want to keep that score. Yeah, absolutely. So. So cool. So that's just a little bit of homework. I, I, uh, I think we can all practice that one. Sure. Um, and then now we've got a quote. Well, usually our quote of the day. Instead, today, it's a cartoon of the day. Yeah. Um, I saw this. This was uh, related to working at home. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about that in the meetup group that, you know, the guys uh, were working from home and feeling a little bit distracted. Right. Stare crazy. This, so this this was titled The Degradation of Social Skills. <laughs> That's um, one of the negatives of working from home. Yes. Yeah. It's the degradation of social skills for working at home. And so the first one is one month in the one guy says to the other guy, hey, man, where you been? Haven't seen you around. And the other guy answers, oh, I, I started working at home about a month ago. It's been sort of cooped up. And so then six months in, the guy comes back and says, you know, hey, man, where you been? Haven't seen you around. And the other guy responds, home, work at, not go out much, daylight not see, English is speak, becoming hardness. <laughs> So starting to affect him a little bit of his uh, social skills. And then one year in, he says, hey, man, where you been? Haven't seen you around. Uh, Huba pork rind, choppy, her, ha, ha, (laughs) peepiness, I peepee now, uh (laughs) aha. So I think the idea is that uh, you become a little bit uh, socially Socially inept. inept, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, that was it was funny because it's exactly what these guys were talking about. Just like. How do I talk to people? You know, mm. how do I, how do I interact? It's like you kind of lose, um, yeah. you know, you lose that ability. Yeah, yeah, you lose that ability. I mean, it's like, you know, it, 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 the the stimulation from others, you know, the, the, the talking and the, the mind and having adult conversation. Yeah. It's just it, it's important. Yeah. You know, plus you eat pork rinds, which is disgusting. <laughs> is that what he did? Yeah, so he said, who but oh, pork, pork rind. Who yeah. but pork rind, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny in the cartoon, he's getting progressively worse at dressing. Right. <laughs> he's yeah, he's all bigger. sloppy. You know, sloppy. And, and then he's actually going to the bathroom on the floor yeah. as he's talking <laughs> with no shirt on in the last one. So I don't think that was the case with the guys. I hope not. But, no, right, right. Um, <laughs> but you get the picture. Yeah, exactly. So with anyways, well, with that, Alan, any other t- uh, things to talk about? No, I think we're good today. We are. Yeah. Well, it is late. We yeah. appreciate uh, everyone listening to us sure and uh, that's another episode of dudes to dads and we will uh, see you next time catch you next time